one thing we start to test out. There's one thing, so watch you we didn't watch you guys go today. Uh, there was one thing that like, you know, I noticed that I think could really, you know, help the room, help the group. Uh, and that's that um Rick's carpet ball. Yeah! So so far so good. How about yours? Oh, pretty good. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I was talking about the fire thing, like in my house. Thing. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. My whole family is sick. I was sick. So like, so I have this finger injury. So you know, I'm out for six weeks, which is sad for for a finger. But I think I rationalized it to you. Yeah. 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 It's either let it sit like this for six weeks, or I can train through it. But then I'm gonna need. It's going to be an eight-week recovery for the surgery with a pin sticking through my finger. So yeah, that's, that's I'd rather be out six weeks than eight weeks and also a more miserable eight weeks. Yeah. Um, so I got sick last week, which I was like, dude, whenever I'm injured and I get sick, I love it. Because yeah. like, I feel like, uh, although I know this is not like how it really works in the real world, I feel like I'm getting it out of the way. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, two birds, I can't train anyhow. Right? Yeah. Like, might as well get it out of the way while I can't train, yeah. you know? Yeah. Oh, dude, so I'm so super out. Uh, you you just sent me a photo of you watch, finally yes. watching. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Just finally watched Star Wars. Yes, yes. I've watched um, episode four, five, and six. Okay. Um, dude, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Um, you know, I feel like I, I should have watched it earlier. I should have watched it, like, when we were kids, yeah. you know? Um, but one thing that I have that you guys don't have is... Like, I got to watch it for the first time. Like, yeah. just just last last week or ten days ago, I watched it for the first. Could you imagine getting to watch it for the Dude, first time? I can't imagine. So you're actually lucky because, like, in you're better luckier than I was as a child because my mom didn't know anything about Star Wars. Yeah. The first time I ever saw anything about Star Wars was actually down here in the strip district. We were like, it was like at the weekend or something, and we were there was like stands and stalls and people selling shit. And like, I saw, I didn't know what it was, but it was like a paint your own Yoda. Oh, okay. Little statue, and I was like, that looks cool. I don't know yeah. what that is. It's like. Think about you. Know, you don't know what, who or what Yoda is. Yeah. You see like a little statue in your kid. You're like, what's that? Yeah. yeah. So I was like, I want that. And so she, I was like, what is this? She's like, it's this Star Wars thing. And she's like, she doesn't know about Star Wars. She's right. Like, I don't know. And, and so she somehow we, I think we got either on tape. I think it was on tape. Return of the Jedi. Ah. Uh, so like the first one I saw <laughs> is the last one. Yeah. Yeah. So like, not I didn't get any of the surprises. It's like, right. Like, yeah. You know, I know like Darth Vader. Like any, I didn't yeah. Get any of that. Yeah. Like, you. Yeah. You already like. Yeah. We're clued yeah. in. In fact, yeah. the la Empire was the last one I saw. Because like. We had so you rent. ran it right backwards. Yeah. We had to. I had to rent. We had to rent the other two because we didn't have them. Right. Yeah. And we had to rent rent them from West Coast. Or no. West Coast video. No. 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 I'm sorry. Not the West Coast video, but the one, the other one that was like in the, uh, the lower shop plaza. Remember that? No. There was a video Where? Store down there. So I'm trying to remember where the video store was because I, the one I remember the most is the Blockbuster in Edgewood Town. Yeah. Edgewood. Yeah. That, that but, was good for video games. Right. But did we have one off the Ardmore? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. Right next to, um, so lower was Foodland and the shop was up the top or was it the other way around? No, no, it was the other way around. Other way around shop. So the Foodland Center had West Coast video at the end. Oh, uh, okay. And then the shopping yeah. center one, shopping center one had the one. Right. So like by Hunan's Palace. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. Um, yeah. Now I'm remembering it. Yeah. 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 So that plaza went, has taken so many turns over the years. It's hard to remember. Like, yeah. 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 yeah that was, but so we, I had to rent, rent Star Wars from there. And yeah. And finally I saw Empire last. So I was like, oh, why am I, I know yeah. what's going to happen here. Yeah. Like, so yeah. I, yeah. But. You're like hey. good to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I think we've talked about this before personally, but just for you know, as tradition on the on the show, favorite Ninja Turtle. So, oh, it's such a struggle for me right now. So, like, if I'm gonna be honest, like growing up, being a huge Ninja Turtles fan, uh, it was Leonardo growing up, right? Um, he had like the leader qualities. Um, I did think the swords were cooler. Um, you know, like I thought like Raphael's size were like kind of dumb um you know but like I, I i large part to you like i understand like the rationale between all the weapons now mm -hmm. um but i just thought the swords were cooler yeah. so like whenever i would 
taped my fingers together so I had three fingers or whatever. I was, I was, I was Leonardo. Um, as I got older, um, I realized <laughs> he's like considered to be the least cool one. <laughs> Right? He's like, you're like, oh, like, like even Donatello is considered to be cooler than him, like, you know? And I'm like, what the hell, dude? But yeah, he was like my favorite. And I think it was like, I I thought, I just like, I like, like, if I had to choose between the four weapons, although yet nunchucks were like super cool and all, but like, I just felt like the swords were like the coolest. Yeah. Uh, for me, so I think that's what first led me to it, and then like the, I don't know, just like the leadership qualities and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, he had a little bit more. R- Raphael had like a main character vibe, but like he was like you know like anti-hero kind of. Yeah. And like Leonardo, like to me, like had more of like the main character. Whereas I think like you know Michelangelo and Donatello are definitely like. Yeah. Like they're hanging back. Like dude, they remind me of like what I'm. Sure, like Michelangelo is supposed to like represent, like he's like the stoner, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. he's the stoner, right? Yeah. He's like, yeah, bro, like, yeah, whatever you want to do, man. Again, or what? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, hey, what do we do today, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, no, absolutely. And honestly, I think they're all kind of like stonery, right? Yeah, you know, because like think about what they did. We actually, we talk, I talked about this in one of the previous episodes with I forget who, 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 who was, but like. How, what they do is they train martial arts all day. Dude. And they eat pizza. Yeah, That's, okay. They're stoned. They're all stoned yeah, all bro. day. Yeah, bro. A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. But all, I think also maybe the Leonardo thing, because we're both older brothers. Yeah. I think there's something to that. Because it's like, he's the older brother. One hundred percent. Yeah. Because like independently from like my persuasion, my, the middle brother, John, my brother, the one who's, you know, next to me immediately gravitated to Raphael, right? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, I felt like like that was like the order of things. And then my third brother, it definitely gra- like gravitated to Michael Avery, <laughs> Absolutely. Right, like, you know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> and like, I guess if any of us were like smart enough, we'd probably pick Donatello, but like, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's kind of funny. And that it was like without persuasion. Like, yeah. you know, it wasn't like, well, I'm, I'm Leonardo, so you can't be him like when we're playing. Right. Like we had a d- decent enough age gap that I probably didn't play like those kind of games with them right. like we're like we were like running around pretending to be ninja like right. by the time jonathan was old enough to be running around pretending to be a ninja turtle i was too old to be like like you know i was probably yeah. like let's play football right. like you know which is perfect actually because for their probably choosing up their turtles yeah because right like they're they see the show they're like oh the oldest one is leonardo and that's not me yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. um so uh so i have various, various uh, you know topics we can uh, we can go over um so <laughs> One here is like whenever I don't, I don't know if you've ever encountered this before. I have just t- talking about trivia or or whatever, but like um, this might have happened to you probably when, more when you first started doing this. When people would say like, "Oh, what's your real job?" Like, what's oh, your... I get that still. Yeah. I still get that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, and, yeah. And, and it's like when I, when I when I hear that, especially in, in, in relation to this, it's yeah. like if you get paid to do this in whatever context, it's like there's nothing more real than coming out here with these monsters. Yeah. And so, yeah, like, your experience in them. So, um, I also don't want to forget that I want to talk about, like, I, I hear it in other people who work here as contacts. I'll hear them, like, kind of, like, like say it or whatever. So I do want to circle. I hope to remember to circle back to that. But, like, you know what I mean? I think it comes from, like, you know, just, like, a, like I don't think it comes from a malicious place when people are saying it. I think they just, like can't wrap their head around that like this could be a full-time job yeah. right like you know what i mean because the major i would guess the majority of people who are doing this job it is a part-time job because it's not at a level in which it could sustain them like financially to be their only job which you know like if i was running this place right like let's say like i started this place it it, it may never have been a full-time job for me right like i might not have had the like business acumen or like the foresight to figure out how to make this like not only sustainable for me to support me and my family, but also to create jobs for several other people to support their families. Cause right. I'm not the only full timer, you right. know, there's, there's a bunch of us. Um, but so like, like large thanks to Warren's like, you know, like his vision and his like abilities to like make it into something that could be full time. And like, I don't know many other people locally in the area where it is like this, this is their f- 
full time. There are some that I do know of, yeah. um, but like most of them do have like another career, and this is like maybe their like I don't want to call it a hobby because I feel like calling it a hobby doesn't give it its power that it that it should. But this is like their second thing. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, like, I started out like that as well. It's not like I just, like, showed up. And, like, when I first started instructing here, it's not like it was like, oh, yep, this is my job. Right. You know? Like, I was an electrician, right. you know? Right. And then, like, I came and I taught classes after work. And then I trained after work yeah. as well. Right? Like, and then as it grew and it became a full-time job, then it, I was able to make that tra- – I was very thankful and luckily able to make that, that transition. But – um, sometimes I think I still get a little, sub- I get surprised at it sometimes because I feel like we're putting out such a professional product yeah. that it's like, I mean, like, look at this place, right? Like, I mean, like you guys are seeing half of it, yeah. right? <laughs> if we took a walk, you would see, we have a whole nother mat room with a boxing ring in it. Uh, over to my right, we have a full weight room with turf and four squat racks and all the bells and whistles and heavy bags in the back. Like, you know what I mean? Like this place doesn't exist for somebody's hobby or somebody's like not primary like obligation and this is one out of four now this is our big one right um and then you know we have zelianople which is like one step down but still like very nice and very big um and then monroeville and then bridgeville and they kind of all take a step down and it it, like makes sense in the in the length of time that they were open right like this the headquarters i mean we haven't been in this building but we've been in this area since 2000, February of 2010, yeah. right? So, like, you know, we're coming up on 14, we're closer to 14 years than we are 13 years. And then in Cran- Zeely, we started in Cranberry, Zeely, Cranberry border, right? You know, we had to move to a bigger location, you yeah. know, so just one neighborhood over, big, same area though. Um, we've been there since 2017, been Roval since 2020, and then Bridgeville only just past a year, yeah. you know? So it makes sense that they would like have steps. And like they're like large grandioseness, yeah. you know. Yeah. 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 So, uh, who, if you could, off the top of your head, whose jujitsu in your entire time of doing jujitsu is the most impressive that you've encountered? If you, or maybe a couple people, I don't know. Like uh, in here, or felt, just in, in over overall in yeah. my life? Where you were like, holy shit, I can't even believe what's going on, here. dude. That I've personally felt. That I personally felt. Uh, an Autos black belt. Uh, he was a black belt bronze medalist this year in the adult middleweight division. Rolando Sampson. Um, and nothing he did. And he did. So I, I had a match with him. 2022 uh, Jiu Jitsu Con. Which is a fairly large IBJJF tournament held in Las Vegas. It runs alongside Masters Worlds. Um, and so Masters Worlds is only for the Masters. So they run like a tournament off to the side called Jiu Jitsu Con for the people in the adult division. Um, so I had a match against him and the, w- he did hit a really nice like kind of like a flying spinning arm bar which ended the match so like highlight reel type thing mm. but the majority of what I took away from it he did everything to everything he did to me was very fundamental and like I could have narrated it right like every single thing like his, he took me down um, with a, sl- a really nice uh, slide by collar tie slide by um, and then you know, I was like trying to attack his leg off of that. He ended up passing my guard with a very nice leg drag, um, you know, and then from side control, took my back and then through my back escape, got mount as we scrambled to a turtle and then he spun around for an arm lock. But the way that he progressed through the position, like it was nothing that I didn't know or I didn't know how to deal with. I knew everything he was doing and I knew how to deal with everything he was doing. It was just his timing, precision, and technique was superior to mine. Right. You know what I mean? And it was it's rare that I lose a match and I'm not a little bit upset with myself, right? Like right. usually like I'm never upset with my opponent for beating me, um, as I don't think anybody should be. Yeah. Um, but sometimes I'm upset with myself, like, oh man, I should have I, I pummeled the wrong way, like, come on, I, I, I'm better than that. Or man, I, I froze up like I like I, I, I didn't compete to my full ability, right? And that match I lost, I wasn't mad at myself. I was like, dude, I did everything I could for where I'm at right now on this day. And this person's just better than me. And like, it was just such like a good feeling to like see like these techniques just like work at the, like 
the highest level. And like I was like, I was like, dude, there's nothing like I can do right now. Like, you know what I mean? Nothing I can do right now. And there was like a lot of validity to it. It's yeah. like, yeah, dude, this is like literally everything you just did to me, I do all the time, right? But now I'm here operating at a level that is higher than mine, yeah. you know? And I really, I really enjoyed it. And I'm, uh, I'm grateful for that match and that experience. So I would say he had the most impressive jujitsu to me um, out of like a competitor or right. somebody who I don't commonly train with. Right. If I were to say, grand scheme of thing, it's going to be Warren. Yep. You know, uh, I've been training with Warren for coming up on 14 years now. Um, and like, you know, like uh, through the years when I started training with Warren, I believe he was 20, he was 29, I was 21. Yep. You know, now he's mid 40s, I'm like late 30s. And like, you know, like I've, I've beaten him less, I've like won less than 20 times. And there's been at least 1200 or more, you know what I mean? And it's just like, even though like our physicality, right? Like, you know, like he was kind of like entering his prime to in his prime when I started with him. But like, you know, then there's like the curve, right? And then like where I'm supposed to catch, he, coming down while I'm still going up this is where I'm supposed to catch and I never did <laughs> you know I never did and uh you know it's still every time I, I train with them it's a challenge and I feel like right now like I have the physical advantage I feel like like when I like I feel like physical yeah. you know I feel like definitely I have a physical advantage um but he's always got an answer for for everything that I've got and I just admire it so much you yeah. know and it's like like I try to every time we roll, like I try to beat them. I try to beat them, but I'm proud that I can't. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah. So I, I, I feel kind of the same way when we roll. It's, it's like you know, if, if I somehow have managed, it's like that's cool. But like, you honestly, like I'm never upset. It's like, man, like every time, every time you whip my ass, it's like that was good. Dude, yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah. Like, yeah. It's, I can completely <laughs> relate to that feeling. Yeah, it's yeah. just like man, it's just like just it's so cool, right? Because yeah. it's someone you care about, and like you're like, man, their journey's still going. And it's just, it's just really great. Yeah. You know? yeah. And uh, so, so that makes you think of like the spirit of competition where it's like, uh, I don't know uh, if you know like Dragon Ball Z at all, but like, like Goku, it's like, he's like that person too, where it's like, it's all about getting better, like personally. It's, it's, it's like, I, I want my Jiu Jitsu to be better every single time. And like, it's not about me winning or losing. It's, it's, like, yeah. it's like, if you beat me, that, I'm excited because, oh shit, now I, now I, need, now I need to yeah. beat you. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. It's like, if I beat you, that's cool. But like, if you, if you beat me, fuck, like now, now I got something to, to like go for, you know? Yeah. So how, like, where do you think for you that comes from? I just, I mean, I've been competing my whole life. You know, I've been competing my whole life. I had my first wrestling match when I was like, I was four years old. It was like early December and I turned five like a few weeks later, mm. you know? So since I was four years old, and one of the things about that is like, I would ask people, and I, I do this from time, I'm like, what's your earliest memory, right? Like something that you truly remember, like there's things that have happened in my life prior to that, that I remember the memory of it. Like, like you know, my mom would be like, oh, we went to Hilton Head for a vacation, and you got stung, or your dad got stung by a jellyfish, or like something yeah. like that, and like, I, rem I just remember being told the story, so I almost feel like I remember it, but I don't truly remember it. And so one of the cool things is like, I don't remember wrestling. <laughs> I don't remember it. I don't remember those matches. I remember, I kind of, I know it was in Kiski. It was at Kiski High School. It was at a Keystone, like, which was a league match. Um, I wrestled a kid from Kiski and I did a double leg and when I put him down it knocked the wind out of him and it made him cry um, And I don't remember this is what I've been told like, you know And like since I was told it like I remembered being told it right and one thing that I love the most about that story is I've been wrestling before I can remember <laughs> Right, and I love that and I'm not like some like great wrestler, but I love wrestling. Yeah, you know, and I think what really like it's like I love the act of it right like I love competition yeah. because competition is what I daydream about yeah. right when I'm in here training I'm like cosplaying competition <laughs> like I'm like I'm like match like okay we play pickup football right like yeah. when you score a touchdown like in your head you're like like in a real game right and you're like oh and like I just like have that in my head and like I get to live I get to play and I get to live that all the time even in practice um <laughs> Yeah, so like I think that's what I like and I think what I'm trying to get to with that is like so why does 
why do I love competition or why do, why do I love being challenged instead of just like being like, oh, like it's so fun to hit arm bars on you. It's so fun to choke you. Da, da, da. No, no, no. When you, when you daydream these glorious moments, like if I'm daydreaming me winning a world championship, I'm not daydreaming me like hitting a sick knee pull slide by and pinning you. I'm daydreaming about this like intense battle where I'm overcoming like hard situations. And most of the time, like if I like daydream like a perfect scenario, it's like I'm like hitting a buzzer beater type thing. Yeah. And like like I dramatic win at the end. Yeah. Right? And in order to have that, you need to be chat like like I need you to be like just as like just as good, if not better than me, for it to have that like meaning and feeling. Absolutely. Right? So like yeah, I'm never like being like, oh like I just submit my way through worlds. That's not my daydream. I mean I totally want to do that. Sure. Right? Like yeah. But like in my daydream it's like I'm in these battles and I'm like I'm my will's being tested and I persevere. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah. that's why I appreciate and love the competition. Yeah. Because that's what I dream about. Yeah. And like so uh, as you were saying, like like when it's the, the situation where you have to overcome something. First 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 thing I was thinking about like I do always feel like if say we're rolling uh, and like if you're if I have to survive like something that like is almost there. Yeah. And I do survive it. That's like I'd much rather do that than like hit a submission. It's like I could whatever. Like hit a submission. Oh. But it's like man, like if you like a north south choke, it's like there's a couple times where it's like Yeah, yeah. I only have my mind here to as a defense. Like I, I I'm gonna just hundred percent can relate. So uh, I have this with you all the time. With you all the time, right? Like I will you'll start like catching up and like you'll be beating me right and i'll be like all right dude like that's not acceptable let's whoop his ass <laughs> right and then i'll start hitting like a, i'll find an I, I like and it's not like i like did it like preemptively or i was like oh i know he has a weakness here i stumble across a weakness you have and it's probably just like jujitsu being what jujitsu should right i'm being funneled to like the area of least resistance. And then all of a sudden I start smoking you with a submission, right? And if you notice, you go back, like it's the same, like I find something and then it's, I hit that move, I hit that move, I hit that move. And I like rack these up and then I never get to hit it again. You know what I mean? And like, I love that, right? I love that first off that you shut everything down. So like my go-tos like aren't there, right? Like there was a time where like, I was like, okay, I get to his back and I'm gonna win. I'm gonna get a submission once I get to his back. And then we, I started getting to your back and you started escaping. And then I stopped getting to your back. You know what I mean? And then like it became more rare, yep. you know? And stuff like that. And like, so it's like, shit, I gotta find something else. But it's gotta like fit in with this like structure because I'm like not gonna get the opportunity. So then I started like dropping back on leg locks, mm. right? Which has been very difficult to do. But like, you know what I mean? Like it gave a different look and then it allowed, it reopened stuff up top. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. stuff like that. So it's like this like evolving game. And then because of you, I've been able to then use like leg lock attacks to help my passing, you know? And it started with you. Like it started with you because we do submissions. Right. We only care about like the submission, right? Like when I like, it frustrates me a little bit because like whenever I'm training in an open mat, Someone just sent, uh, we have, a, I have a, like a group chat with Vince, Vince, Paul and Christian and Paul sent this meme. I, I should probably, I should probably just pull it up, but it's like somebody that's like, oh, that dude who like keeps track of the score and will like pass your guard, then let you regain guard to pass your guard again. <laughs> and like, it's like in like open mat, right? Like I'm that guy. Yeah. Like I, I legitimately do, I do that all the time. Sure. Like I keep score all the time and I don't keep score with you because you've ruined it for me. Cause I know you don't <laughs> care. You don't care. So like. Whenever I like I pass Vince's guard, right? Like I don't need to say anything. I know we both know. Yeah. We both know I'm winning 3-0 right now. Like we both know. When I'm one with Christian, like same thing, like we both know. Yeah. Right? Like I know we're both kind of keeping score in our head because we do compete in like our primary focus is like point based tournaments. Sure. You know? Um so I like I know it. but like when I pass your guard, I just know that you just don't care. And it like it like takes like that enjoyment away from what would be the guard pass. So it's just all about the submission. And in turn, it like has got my guard passing better because then to find like different ways to like make you care, mm. right? Cause you care when like, I mean like you care, not like, like you care that I submit you, but like, you know, like that's what like the game is, that's the goal, yeah. right? Yeah, the goal is yeah. for that not to happen and then for you to submit me. Yeah. So like, and I like, I'm trying to get across. I, I don't think you're getting mad when I submit you, but you, 
you care that I have submitted of course, you. Of course. <laughs> right? of course. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I want to win. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, like, that in turn has helped help me a lot. So there goes another example of, like, competi- like making the competition. And just, like, it, it's what makes you improve, right? Like, if we literally didn't give a shit about anything, this would not be that fun. Right. You know? Yeah, we wouldn't still be doing this, probably. No, no, I definitely would. Yeah. I definitely would. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what, what are the things, other than, like, martial arts, are you... The audience or the people you know might not realize that you're super nerdy about. Super nerdy, dude. Oh, I don't know if I have anything. I mean, be- you, then go into because, like, if you think about it, like, are you, are you considering wrestling a martial art? So you can. I mean, that's fine. Like, like, and, and also maybe like pro pro wrestling or like that. Like, like okay. any, any, any aspect of like like maybe other than like jujitsu, like your main job, okay. job. So what people might so so here goes the thing. So like, I do identify primarily as a wrestler, and I think that maybe right about now my jujitsu has surpassed my wrestling. Okay, um, but like for the majority of my time being a jiu-jitsu practitioner, my wrestling has been better than my jiu-jitsu. I think that has now like like passed. Um, but I am such a hardcore fan of the sport of wrestling. I am a far better fan of the sport than I ever was a, an athlete, especially while I was wrestling or even now. Like. Like, I watch wrestling matches all the time. Um, I know stats. Like, sometimes, like, so there's a, the prominent media source for wrestling is Flow Wrestling. And there's been times where, like, during a broadcast, like, I'll tweet them and be like, no, nah, it's actually this. And they'll, like, reply to me <laughs> on the broadcast. They're like, oh, thanks, Mike Wilkins. <laughs> it, is, it is the same Troy Dolan from Derry Area High School, blah, 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 and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, dude, like, like, and like, I, I, like, I love that stuff. Like, I'm a very huge um, fan of the pit wrestling program. Yep. Um, some of the reasons I am primarily um, the coaching staff. I consider friends of mine. Um, they became friends of mine after I was a fan. It's not like, like, oh, that's why. But like, I got to like, I'm such like a strong fan that you know, I met the coaches, right. and like, you know, we're on like a first name basis right. uh, and stuff like that. Um, you know, they're right here. It's easy to go to the matches, and they're a high level program. So like, I just like, I'm such a, sh- and I didn't go to pit, right. but like, I'm a strong supporter of the pit pit wrestling program. Yeah. Um, and like. Dude, like I, I don't miss any of their matches. Uh, if I'm there, if I can be there in person, there in person. Ever since they started offering season ticket sales, I've been a season ticket holder. You know what I mean? Uh, and things like that. And like I just like I love following the sport. I like the uh, the storylines yeah. and stuff. Like all my podcasts. If I pull up all my podcasts, it's FRL, which is a wrestling podcast. It's Bashamania, which is a wrestling podcast. It's the first word, which is a wrestling podcast. It's wrestling changed my life, which is. Take a guess. Yep. Like, you know what I mean? It's Ath Leader, which is a wrestling, but like, I've got all wrestling podcasts and then BJJ Fanatics podcast. That's my only non wrestling podcast. <laughs> and like, that's all I listen to. Yep. And like, that's all the media I consume. And I just love it. I'm just such an avid fan. Um, I love the history of it. Like, I like that, like, you know, like, people can be like, oh, like, how did this person do in this year? And like, I know the answer. Like, I, I, I very likely know the answer especially I definitely more likely know the answer more than anybody more than almost anybody else there are some people in the sport who I actually I get to know all these people right like like Jason Bryant like he's um, a media person in wrestling he hosts like a wrestling platform yeah. that has a bunch of wrestling podcasts and stuff he announces like the Olympics and the world championships um, and he would put out like an encyclopedia every year like for wrestling and stuff so like he knows more than me Right. right, but like, dude, like I'm li- like I don't get paid. It's not my profession at all. I'm literally up there. Yeah. I'm up there with like the best in the world at like knowing wrestling, like statistics, facts, and happenings. I feel like that has like, that's like an in, a, a, a very Pittsburgh like thing. Like, yeah, like to be because like think about you like, listen to like some like local like DD or some like yeah, or there's like people calling in. That's like such a such a thing. Like I like there's like they have like certain people where it's like oh yeah, this one guy, this guy knows everything yeah. about this one band or the subject yeah or exactly like, yeah. and they're mainly and like most people are known by like their screen name too yeah. right or like their handle on right. whatever whatever forum or whatever yeah. right like there's a guy who um is more knowledgeable than me in the wrestling like world as far as like like he's like what i am a step up yeah you know um and he does do it like professionally though now um but like he didn't start like that he started out just like me and then turned it into like a profession i do not want to turn it into a, i do not want like this is my like like I don't want to like model that, right. but uh, he goes by the moniker uh, the wrestling nomad, 
right? And like I interact with him on Twitter all the time, and he's a wealth of knowledge as well. But he's like just like me, just like obsessed with wrestling. Except he's like he's like that Rolando Sampson guy who beat me. Yeah. He's him for okay. wrestling knowledge. Okay. Like he definitely is. Is he a wrestler? Also? He did wrestle. Okay. Um, I believe he may not have wrestled in college. Okay. You know, one of the things that I've noticed too, Jason Bryant also, I believe he did not wrestle in college either. It, it seems that like a lot of the people who are very strong like with like like you know it, it it doesn't necessarily correlate with wrestling skill and ability you know what i mean like you may have had to, we've all wrestled because it's very difficult to have gotten that deep into the sport without having like an intimate knowledge of it or have experienced it yeah. but honestly the people who like i would consider the best like like historians or like like they weren't like great wrestlers like yeah. i certainly wasn't like sure. you know what i mean but like i know i know i know my stuff i know my stuff so much that like i'll be at dinners or i'll be at events with division one wrestling coaches and like they'll be hitting me for information right they'll be like oh like oh Vito's in his sixth year and i'm like no actually he's in his seventh year and they're like no because he was a year after yoni i'm like yeah he was a year after yoni because he gray shirted a year but they were the same graduation class i'm like oh yeah and then all of a sudden after that they're like hey what about this guy hey what about that guy right <laughs> yeah. and like this is like they're, they're d1 coaches who are at a much higher level than i am they competed at a much higher level than i was yeah which you know they don't have the time to probably be like right. <laughs> like diving into all that stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's what I do for my hobby. Cool, cool. So, so, yeah. so it, that actually we uh, I made we made a video here not too long ago about uh, people making comments about the stand up like in some of our the videos that we shot yeah that we shot here like I think may, maybe like a long time ago one of ours but like definitely me and like me and Ryan and like yeah where it's like so how does that how, what's your response to um. It's just like people don't know what they're talking about and they just don't and like you can come wrestle me dude You can come <laughs> wrestle me because here goes what's gonna happen like I wrestle with very good wrestlers all the time You know we have several um, I was division three wrestler um, Which is like nothing to like laugh at no. you know yeah. um, We have several division one wrestlers down here that I wrestle with all the time and dude guess what they seek me out for wrestling advice You know what I mean? Um, especially when it comes to wrestling for MMA or wrestling for jiu-jitsu because it is different. There's different goals which changes things, right? Like in wrestling for jiu-jitsu, we carry a more upright stance, okay? Why? Well, you know, um, there's reasons behind it, you know? It's that front head attacks, okay, have so much more value in jiu-jitsu than they do in wrestling, okay? If you shit on me, I stuff it, I'm in a front head position, what are my goals in wrestling? My primary goal is to spin behind you to secure the takedown, right? So to counter your shot, secure the takedown. Some secondary goals that I may have there are taking you straight to your back. Like maybe I go like with like a chin and arm cow catcher driving you straight to your back. Maybe I get crazy and hit a mixer and things like that. But those are more like high reward, lower percentage moves, like riskier moves, yeah. riskier moves. Like I think everybody would understand what I'm talking about. So, in turn, when you are down there in that front head position on a failed shot or if I snapped you down there in wrestling, you are concerned with primary go behind or these like wild pinning combinations. It becomes easier to defend those because you know what you're not concerned about? My guillotine, my anaconda, my darts, right? So now when it comes to jiu-jitsu, now I have Final, finalization moves. I can submit you here now, as well as spin behind. And then also the spin behind maybe has a little more danger in jujitsu because now I'm near your back, which is such a dominant position. Whereas in wrestling, we're just like top and bottom there. And yes, the top person is at the advantage is considered in the offensive position. But when it's time for choice in between periods, people select bottom. They yeah. choose to start on the bottom, sure. right? Because it is a position that can be scored from and the rules are set to make it more difficult on the top person. Like you're not allowed to lock your hands. We're talking folk style now. Not allowed to lock, lock your hands while you're on the top position. Yeah. And, and that's because of how difficult that would make improving your position from the bottom. Right. Guess what? We can do it in jiu-jitsu. So that makes it more of like a threat for those positions. So we tend to gravitate a little bit more towards lower risk attacks because of how severe the risk is. So we're a little bit more snap down, slide by, you know, foot sweep heavy as opposed to, in comparison to wrestling, right. you know, because just because of that. And then also we have the option to like try to pull or jump a guard, right? Yeah. So like 
an upright, a more upright stance makes a little more sense for the goals of it. A way that I would try to convince a wrestler of that, so I'm assuming that these people have, you know, a wrestling background and see that what we are doing is not 100% correct for wrestling. Sure. And that if the wrestling rule set was what we were using, guess what? Our stances are going to be lower right. because the rule set applies. So Greco-Roman. So I'm assuming that these experts, they're, they're familiar with Greco-Roman. Why, why aren't they standing in a low stance? Because the rules dictate that it would be a disadvantage to be in a low stance. They're not allowed to attack the legs. So naturally the stance gets brought upright, right? It's a change in the rules that dictates a more efficient way to stand. And like that's what's happening with us. We're standing in in a, in a more efficient way. Yeah. Okay. Because guess what, dude? I want you to shoot. I want that's you to shoot. I want, I want that. Yes. I wish that. I want. I that. want you to shoot. My my best chances, or my most like the, the like like I have so many more rewards for you to be in on me than I do to be in on you. You know what I mean? Like here's your neck, right? And not only that, like. Not only do that, now I have the submission opportunity, but the failed submission opportunity could likely land me in a better position anyhow. In a better position, it just gives me mo more shots. So you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, does that mean that I don't shoot? No, dude, I shoot all the time because my dad didn't pay for all them wrestling camps for me not to be shooting. <laughs> and there still is value in, in shooting, right? Because when yeah. we get stalemated out up there, yeah. right? Like we're there and like, oh, it's like collar tight, clear to a two on one. Uh, Break the grip, collar tie, clear to the two on one, pummel yep. inside, uh, drag attempt, slide by attempt, right? It like looks like we're both just like step one, step zero, step one, step zero, step one. It's like no one's like getting to climb the ladder because we're combating that first step over and over and over and over. So sometimes in order to break that, like, you know, I got to shoot. I got to shoot. And I have an advantage on a lot of people in shooting, especially for jujitsu, because I have a deeper understanding than maybe most on what is happening once I'm in on those legs, yep. you know? But with that being said, I don't recommend it. Like, I don't recommend it. Like, I think that there has to be a skill disadvantage for shooting to be the right choice for you without exhausting other options first. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. that's what dictates, and that's why it looks like that. And yeah, if you were like, oh, well, I just watched a college wrestling match and it didn't look like that. Yeah, because the rules are different and the goals are different. Yeah. You know what I mean? I have those same college wrestlers in here standing more upright. Right, and not because I told them, because it makes more sense. Just because they figured out. The, yeah, the, they figured out. The first ten times it took shots, they got choked the fuck out. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. Yeah, so like you know, it just becomes more like 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 it's it's natural evolution, right? You don't think I came in standing low? You don't think I came in wrestling like how I was taught my whole life? Yeah. So how did me, a wrestler, since I was four years old, you know? I'm not saying I was like the greatest, but like I wrestled since I was four years old, so I've got good experience in it, good enough to go ahead and wrestle in college. Um, why is my stance all of a sudden deteriorated to a high stance? Because that's what the rules call for, yeah. right? That's what becomes the more efficient stance. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I think that um, that's a pretty good uh, time for an episode. Like uh, that's um, we covered a lot of stuff there. Um, that was fun. We got to do more. We have I want to do more uh, episodes. We absolutely do more. Uh, wait, yeah. honestly, we, we could like we can get coming maybe a little bit earlier, but then we usually roll. Just do like a little bit and then roll. Yeah, I'm down. Uh, I'm down. I'm down for that. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah, well, thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time, dude. Yeah, for sure. Do I point to? Well, wait, wait for it. Wait for it. It's, it's almost time. Okay. It's almost time. Have you have you? Have you I saw you let Vince point to the damn bell. I show him where the bell's gonna be. There you go. Thank you. And then uh, <laughs> I did let. I, in all why? I mean, if you're not you're not around, man. What am no, I, I understand. I understand. I, I gotta I'm just trying to bust some balls. <laughs> The, today the bell is yours. All right. So, so thanks for watching. You cue me up though. Okay. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks to the general for uh, being on the channel. Um, do the liking, subscribing, hit the bell, and uh, say? where am I? I'm going here. Yeah. Come down and train. <laughs> awesome, dude. <laughs>
W, double O, D, Y. Brother, thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much. Well, Love on, it. On the back, you got the... Uh, oh, yeah, no, it's, it, it's, it's customized. Yes, it's got the custom Wilkins on there. Awesome, bro. This is sick. Do you have one? Yeah. Okay. So whenever you're back, we'll, yeah. we'll do it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs>